what you should know prior to buying a house in the East Bay real estate market. Let's get into it. What's up everybody? My name is Cooper Eisenman. I am a full-time real estate agent here in the Tri-Valley and San Ramon Valley areas of the East Bay area, which consists of Livermore, Pleasanton, Dublin, San Ramon, Danville, and Alamo. And if you're new to my channel, I want to ask you to please, please hit that like button as it does help my videos to reach more people just like you who are interested or considering a move to these regions and want to learn a little bit more about it. Also, I've been getting a ton of text calls and emails from buyers and sellers who are looking to either buy and or sell a home, and I absolutely love it. So please reach out to me anytime if you have any questions or need to buy a house or need to sell a house or whatever it is real estate related, or if you're just curious about a very specific question that I can probably help answer as it pertains to the Tri-Valley and San Ramon Valley area. I'm gonna put my contact information down here at the bottom. I always get back to you within 15 or 20 minutes, so it's super fast and super convenient. Now, it's no secret that the real estate market in the entire country has seen massive growth over the past year and a half, and the Bay Area, and more specifically, the East Bay Area, are definitely no exception. Now, many were questioning just what would happen to the real estate market at the beginning of the pandemic, but I don't think anybody really knew that it would cause one of the most fierce and competitive real estate markets to date. So with that being said, I want to discuss a few key points with you to help prepare you if you're about to enter the East Bay real estate market to buy a home. In this market, and I don't know about other parts of the country, but your offer won't even be looked at or entertained if you don't have a pre-approval letter that comes along with it. First things first is finding a real estate agent and probably more importantly is getting your loan pre-approval if you're going to need a mortgage when you buy your home. Especially in this market, you need to have your mortgage locked down and fully approved prior to even seeing one house. Now why would you need a loan that quickly and be prepared? Because in this market, it is so fierce and so competitive that if you find a home that you really like, you may only have a couple days to do your due diligence and prepare an offer. And there won't be enough time for you to get a pre-approval for a mortgage after you find a home you like. You must lock down that pre-approval beforehand. That way you know just how much you can afford and then you can start shopping for homes. Then if you find a home you really love and you just need to have it, we're all ready to go. At that point, all we need to do is the due diligence on the property and make sure it's in a good enough condition that you're comfortable with owning it. Secondly, some listing agents and sellers will even require proof of a pre-approval before you can even secure a showing to see the property that you're interested in. So getting pre-approved beforehand and that being the first step is most definitely the most important way to start your home buying process. Now, number two is seeing homes and scheduling showings. Now, before the pandemic, we could basically see a home whenever we wanted, especially if they had an open house during the weekend in which you had a three or four hour window to go in and out, spend as much time as you needed, etc. Now, up until just very recently, like two weeks ago, we had to schedule showings in 20 or 30 minute windows and it could only be two buyers and their agent at a time in the home. So seeing a home was much more difficult because you had to schedule a showing. But about two weeks ago, California opened open houses again, giving buyers and agents the opportunity to see homes more freely. But what has stayed the same is the fact that buyers and agents need to sign PED forms prior to seeing homes in person. Now a PED form is just a COVID-19 disclosure that states you haven't been infected with COVID in the recent past. 
Now, of course, it is up to the seller's discretion if they want to allow open houses and have many more groups of buyers and agents in the home at the same time. And if they don't, then we are still restricted to a 20 or 30 minute window, in which case you will need to reach out to your real estate agent and have him or her look into the available time slots and see if it works for your schedule. Now, number three is offers and due diligence, what you can expect to write in an offer and the terms and how you can expect to go about doing your own due diligence on a property you're interested in buying. Now, 90% of homes during COVID or even prior to COVID, at least in the Bay Area real estate market, come with a full set of disclosures so you know the full condition of the house prior to even writing an offer. Those include seller disclosures, which asks the current owner specific questions about the property that only they would know. It also includes a full set of inspection disclosures, including a roof inspection, a home inspection, and a pest inspection. Now, the only reason that there would be more specialty inspections, like a foundation inspection or a pool inspection specifically, is if the home obviously has a pool. And aside from that, another specialty inspection may come up if the home inspector notes any further damage to anything that he comes across, in which case the home would likely come with another specialty inspection for whatever item the home inspector called out. Now this full set of disclosures is very, very important in the due diligence process because in today's market, it is not uncommon for buyers to write fully non-contingent offers in order to be competitive to get their offer won. Now I know this can be very scary for new buyers who are basically signing up to take the house as is, but you must understand that the due diligence process and the disclosures that we do have prior to writing an offer are very, very important. And it's absolutely necessary that those reports and disclosures are reviewed thoroughly between yourself and your agent so that you're comfortable with the condition of the home prior to writing an offer. Now another aspect of writing an offer and the terms is the loan contingency. And this goes back to my first point on how important it is to solidify your loan beforehand because you need to be absolutely sure that you can acquire financing and a good mortgage broker is going to be able to really lock that down, get all of your information, all your documentation and be certain that you're going to be able to acquire this loan and close the deal. Now, not necessarily the most important aspect, but definitely just as important as the loan and inspection contingency is the appraisal contingency. Now, if you're getting a mortgage to purchase a home, the mortgage broker or lender is going to require that the home has an appraisal to make sure that it's worth what you're paying for it. The biggest risk with removing this contingency up front with the offer is if the appraisal price comes in lower then you agree to buy the home at. If that does happen, you are on the hook as the buyer for the difference in cash at closing. So for example, if you've agreed to purchase a home for a million dollars and the appraisal comes in at 970,000, then you're required to come up with a $30,000 difference between the appraisal price and the purchase price. Now, in my experience, it is rare that a home does not appraise for the contract price, but you do always run that risk. So if you have any questions on how you can ease your nerves prior to writing an offer in regards to appraisals, reach out to me anytime. I'd like to explain a couple things to you. Now, with all of that scary stuff being said, I have to say it is some of the most exciting times for buyers and sellers to be looking for that new home, whether it's for better schools for the kids, that backyard you've always wanted, or just a change of scenery. The market is moving really fast, but I swear when my buyers get that call that their offer has been accepted, you can hear the joy in their voice and it was all for good reasons. But like I tell all of my buyers, if we're persistent, realistic, and continuing to look at homes, I promise you it will happen sooner rather than later and it is the best feeling in the world when you just realize you bought the home you really, really love. Now, of course, there are a couple strategies I do like to use to help reduce the competition and make this process even that much faster, and that is the opportunity for off-market properties, which I do have my own personal listings that come up, as well as close relationships with colleagues who let me know about listings they have coming up that may be available off-market. 
The other strategy is to look at homes that have only been on the market 14 days or longer as they likely haven't received an offer yet and the competition on that home has been greatly reduced. Now going one of those two routes creates a lot less inventory than what's already low inventory of homes that are for sale on the market, but the opportunity is still there and I always keep my eyes and ears open for any opportunities that do arise from those two strategies. Contact me anytime to discuss how I help buyers and sellers in this real estate market as I am seeing success with both sides of the transaction. If you have any other questions, please reach out to me anytime. I absolutely love helping my clients buy and sell homes. You can reach me at my contact information down here at the bottom. I always get back to you within 15 or 20 minutes, so it's super fast and super convenient. And until next time, see ya.